Hello, welcome back to the Diamonds in the Rough podcast. I'm John DeAngelis, joined by Will once again. Hello. Um, kind of coming up with a new segment, maybe a new, a new recurring thing, and it's just going to be we're going to say some hot takes, um, some things that sports fans shouldn't say, probably. But we're going to say them. We're going to bring them light. We're going to talk about them. You may disagree, but hopefully it's pretty entertaining. Uh, it can be about any sport, any player, any team, you know, anything like that. Just a hot take. Uh, I have three. Uh, I think Will has three, or at least is thinking of some, because I know in his brain he has just a catalog of hot takes. <laughs> and it's the only thing he likes to talk about when it comes to sports. So this is a tailor-made topic for will uh but i'm gonna start with one it's an nba one okay i think it's hot mainly because the majority of the public would disagree but i think if you're a true nba fan you agree with it and it's that shy gilgis alexander is better than trey young i would i think i agree you 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 agree with that yeah uh, it's tough to it's tough to say he's never led a team to the eastern conference finals though i know that that's like that's kind of why it's hot because it's like shy. You know, he he was very promising his rookie year in the Clippers. I think he was a pretty good part of why they were the eighth seed. And I think they beat the Warriors twice. Mm-hmm. So they they were promising. Then he gets traded to the Thunder, goes under Chris Paul's wing, really excels. And then the Thunder are a surprise five seed, four seed. I know they lost in the first round. Um, but then since then, the Thunder have just been tanking. And I mean, there's been so many things that I feel like has just hurt shy in terms of how people view him, such as like sitting him towards the end of the season. You know, they say he's injured, but they're trying to lose. And, you know, when Al Horford was on the team, they were winning too many games. So they sat him the rest of the season. Just things like that, where they're very intentionally trying to lose. The NBA is not going to do anything about it but they're trying to lose. So shy seems as like he's this losing player, which I just disagree with. His stats are absurd when he plays. He's just so fun to watch, but Trey Young's the household name. And part of that's, you know, Eastern conference finals. Um, But I think it's also, you know, he's a three point shooter. He shoots from absurd distances. His highlights are crazy. Uh, His numbers sometimes will have absurd games, uh, things like that. Um. Yeah, kind of, kind of mid take, you know. I like I like that take. I didn't. I haven't thought about that because it's Trey Young. Everyone see like was he? He made an All NBA team. I don't remember which one he made. But like Trey Young gets the accolades, right? Yeah. As far as like All Star appearances and things like that, and mm-hmm. you know he's seen as a guy who like maybe he can win a title and stuff like that. But I see Shy as a far better player. I do too. Um, so that's more of like a general public. You're not really an NBA fan. You'd be like, who, who, why, why do you think this? This is absurd. But I think if you're a real NBA fan, it, you, you're just going to agree with it. So I, I, I do agree with it. I like yeah. that take. Yeah. Um, mine's more of a, I'll stick to basketball too then. Um, mine's more of a broad take. I think personally, if you don't celebrate or taunt, after a massive play or a poster or something that if you don't, you should get a technical foul. <laughs> what? I was just not expecting this. No, that's like, I, I was expecting some like this team is this, this player is this. Yours is just a general rule that if you don't taunt after a sick play, that's yeah, a technical. Like we, Cause the, the NBA, the culture's off, man. Like it would imagine if you <laughs> legally had to taunt. <laughs> Is this just a sports thing or just an NBA thing? I don't know the other sports well enough to know. Like, like for I instance, mean, if you hit a home run, you have to bat flip. Yeah, no. But I feel like in basketball, it's different, though. Like, like you are going to cost your team two free throws <laughs> if, you <don't, laughs> if you don't taunt your opponent after a poster. What if you just don't taunt twice so you get ejected? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. You can make it funny. That's one of the greatest things you've ever said, honestly. Oh, we're just getting started. We're just getting, I'm so happy I thought of this idea. 
and was like, Will's perfect for it. Already <laughs> I, starting I, off with a banger. So I've thought about that before, and I wasn't going to say it for my take, but I, I did. I'm trying to think of how you could implement, like football, you could obviously throw a flag. That's 15 yards. <laughs> I, <laughs> you scored a touchdown and didn't celebrate. That's 15 yards. No, it's t- yeah, you, you didn't taunt your opponent. Tweet, they get two technical free throws. <laughs> It's just you get ejected. <laughs> you refuse to taunt twice, you get ejected. You do that in multiple games, you get a multiple game suspension. Uh, hockey, that's a penalty. Mm-hmm. Soccer, it's a penalty kick. <laughs> this is a great idea. <laughs> this is a phenomenal idea. Because I think in most of the sports, like... You know, I think in certain cases, like the the gritty with like John ja Moran, the Grizzlies was getting annoying. Yeah. Right. But in general, like, you know, bat flips made the game more exciting, although it was annoying to some people, more of the older heads and the unwritten rules of baseball. I think for the younger generation, um, you know, they th- they think it's more exciting. I agree. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's a good take. I like that. Thank you. All right, I'll go next. NFL, which I know you're not super in on the NFL. Mine are more like actual, like, you know, sports thoughts. So I wonder if you're just going to keep going this direction of the game within the game we're going to talk about. I can. I wasn't planning on it, but I can. Hey, you, you got – hey, you say what you want. But um, mine is that Davis Mills, Texans quarterback, is going yeah, to be the good. best quarterback in the AFC South this year. So that's him. Him, Matt Ryan. Tannehill, Trevor Lawrence. The Matt Ryan one is the tough one. Matt Matt Ryan is probably the tougher one. But I'm also big on Lawrence and think he's going to have a good comeback year because they gave him a lot of weapons and a new coach. And, you know, Doug Peterson with yeah. Car- made Carson Wentz an MVP, right? So I think he's going to have a good year too. I just think what Davis Mills showed last year was really impressive and surprising. Mm-hmm. And I know the Texans don't necessarily have – a ton more weapons. I just think he's going to take this massive jump. All right. That's a good take. <laughs> I, I, no, I, you, I know, I know you're not a big football guy, so you probably don't have a lot of pain. Would you, do you think it's going to happen or not? Like, it was, I think I'm pretty high on Matt Ryan. Yeah, um, that's fair. He also, I mean, he's been to the Super Bowl. He, he has been to the Super Bowl. Um <laughs> I, but definitely stats wise, it's going to be close. Yeah. It, it's mean, just as far as, cause you know, for this take to work, I think Davis Mills has to probably go like seven and 10, eight and nine, like a surprising season from Houston. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause the Colts are going to probably make the playoffs 10, 11 wins. Matt Ryan's going to be good. It's going to be tough to go. Yeah. This guy who won three or four or five less games had a better season than Matt Ryan, you know? So that, that, that's like the issue with it. But I think stats wise mills will be comparable or even better for sure. Um, But yeah, up over to you, Will. Um, So I, I was thinking, I was watching YouTube clips of NFL recently in preparation of my fantasy football draft. Right. And <laughs> <laughs> and that Ben Roethlisberger throw in the Super Bowl against the Cardinals, where it's absurd. That I think that's the greatest throw I've ever seen. It was a great catch too. I think that's the greatest football play I've seen. I mean, it's definitely on the, when you consider the scale of it. Oh yeah, it's definitely on all time lists as far as like you know greatest plays and things like that. Um, and watching it live was crazy. You're like, there's no way he got his feet down. But and then so there's that. And then if we're if 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 we want to fix the game of football, <laughs> um I think that the field goals should be the points should be dependent on how far away you are. And then if you miss, you get like negative points too. So like there's way more risk in kicking field goals. <laughs> no. <laughs> I strongly disagree with it. So, I, so you I, want I, it to I, be I, just I, like fantasy, where it's like yes, twenty yards all, and in is one point, yes. twenty to thirty is two, thirty to four, whatever yes. it is, and then if you miss, it's a negative that amount. No, no, no. If you miss, so it's the inverse. If it's you the miss, inverse, if so you, you miss mi- from forty and above, I'm not. 
maybe 40s minus one, but like above, like 50 and above, nothing. So go for, for 40 it, to know. 50 minus one. Yeah, 30 to 40 minus two. Just just put even more <laughs> mental strain on kickers. Who already I think kickers enough. are going through it enough that like we just don't need to make – like, look, there are so many – fans like vikings fans you know bears fans that are just traumatized whenever the kicker goes out there i think like they're like more of those fans will need therapy if we start adding negative points to it what i want matters more than what they want (laughs) and i want this i think this is terrible I think this is a big miss. God, you, you, just, you just you just want to be like Madden. So we're like, you have to go for it on fourth down too bad. <laughs> I just think it's wasteful that we have four downs, but typically only play 75% of them. It's just smart football. <laughs> There's, well, let's change the knowledge then. All right. I, I guess I see why football just isn't your sport. <laughs> Maybe, maybe maybe next episode we'll skip the football take for you. <laughs> we'll just skip the football take. So you had a twofer. You had the the you think it's I, so the, the Roethlisberger's the that greatest I, I actually stand by that play. I, that play is incredible. Um. All right. I mean, you know, like I, if, if there I was think... like a weight limit on linemen. Like, you can't be heavier than 300-something pounds. I mean, I think there's definitely a lot of plays, and I think a lot of bias goes into it, right? Like, me, right? Obviously, the Malcolm Butler play is probably going to be ahead of it because that was an unreal play. That was completely... We, I remember watching that live with you. You were not with me, no. I was. Yeah, we, we were didn't, at we Timmy, didn't... Timmy Dalton's house. You were there? Yes. I was playing oh. I was playing chill with his little brother. <laughs> okay. Shout out Timmy Dalton. <laughs> um but yeah no it was just completely unexpected everyone's like they're running the ball to Marshawn Lynch they decide not to um you know we know we know what happens shout out Mike from last podcast because he's a Seahawks fan and I love to remind him of this play but like for me like I obviously am gonna think because it was so impactful in my life (laughs) that that's a greater play right that was a great play um yeah, I hear you. And some some of the like older plays, like I can't really relate to. Um, but you have to you have to put them on the list and stuff like that. But no, I that was I think Steelers Cardinals was the first like Super Bowl. No, I mean 07, I remember, but like because that's when the uh-huh. pass lost. But Cardinals Steelers was probably the best Super Bowl I'd watched at the time. It was incredible. And that's really what got me into football, honestly. Fair enough. I respect that. All right. So my really hot take. This is this is steaming. Straight off the burner. This is steaming. Yeah. Okay. It's about the Atlanta Braves. Uh-oh. All right. They have an absurd amount of their stars signed until 2027. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm saying they are gonna win three World Series before their contracts are up. Including the one they won? No. <laughs> Three more World Series. Three more World Series. By 2027. Yes. That's a bold. That's a real, it's a really bold one. Even like one might not happen, right? When you look at like the Dodgers, they have to get through. I mean, even this year, there's the Mets, the Dodgers. I wouldn't necessarily say the Padres are too much of a threat. I think the Phillies are more of a threat. Um, cause you know, that's their three starters are Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, Syndergaard, Bryce Harper's back looking good. They're on fire. Their bullpen solid. Um, mm-hmm. so like they, they do have a, a tough row, but I think like I have them coming out of the NL and if they get to the world series, I have a hard time thinking they lose it. <laughs> right. Well, I think the NL is just going to win this year. I disagree. Not if Seattle makes it. Will stop. Uh, I can't stop. Won't will stop. will stop. I I can't. No, Seattle's no. Up. This just no stop. They're like it. they're doing it. You have Seattle winning the World Series, and this is not your final hot take. You're just saying it. 
if if my Phillies don't win, then of course I have Seattle winning. My God. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna right. pretend I didn't hear that. But point is <laughs> I'm so, envisioning they win this year, obviously, when I say this take. If they don't, it's gonna be a lot harder to win three, right? But then yeah. I think they win two in somewhere. Because the way I see it is they have their hitters like set. They're all young. They're all going to get better for 2027. They always have rookies come out like their farm system is great. And they're just, their coaching and organization is elite, which is the main reason I believe in it so much. Right. Okay. Um, because like the people running the Braves are very, very smart with what they're doing. I hear um, you. So there's that. They always have some farm system guys come up and are immediate impact players, right? They have Spencer Strider has been unbelievable. And then the rookie outfielder has been great. And they signed him till 2027. Um, you know, and then the common, I think, way to win the World Series is, you know, you're hitting a set and then at the deadline you get the pitchers, right? That's like the common way. So like, they're probably going to let Max Freed go because he's going to be too much, you know, but I think at the deadline you can get some guys or even in the off season if you want. So I think, I think they have the formula to win world series. And I think, I think they're going to win three. It's crazy. It's absurd, but that's, that's my take. I disagree, but <laughs> we will find out in the coming Do you think years. they'll win at least one? One more. Yeah. In the next five years. Yeah. I'll say, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they stole one more. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, they're only seven games better than the Phils, though. And the Phillies just got Harper back. So I'm feeling. Do you think the Phillies are catching up to the Braves? I mean, they're both of them are making the playoffs anyway. I, I think the Phillies have a really good shot to do Braves games. are Braves are three games back of the match. They would play each other in the first round, I'm pretty sure. Um they're gonna be the two the, hottest wild cards. Yeah, you're right. And then the Padres but, would have to play St. Louis. St. Louis is waxing San Diego. St. Louis is really, really coming on lately. Also, I was saying, do you think Nolan Arenado is the best fielding third baseman of all time? I don't know enough about third base fielding history. Okay. I know that he's the best that I've seen. Okay, well, I think so. But he, if he, when he wins gold glove, um, it'll be like his 10th consecutive gold glove or something, which is actually only second longest streak because the first guy is 16. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, I, I just saw it on Instagram. I don't know the name. Uh, I can try to pull it up. But um, all right, your your final take, right? You got you got yeah. You got one I, got more. A, I got a few for baseball. Um, okay, you know, just say so a few. Number one, I think Shohei Otani is like the most adequate example of like a different sport of like oh eight LeBron. Just like the absolute worst organization setting you up for failure every time. And yet you still are just top of the class. Um, I also think Goldschmidt and Arenado should be co-MVPs this year. Yeah, uh, I, I have I, mentioned this on past that you've said this, but I want you to elaborate on it. I just think that both of them are incredibly integral to the team. Goldschmidt's a little bit better at hitting. Arenado's a little bit better at fielding. They both like man the corners absolutely carry that lineup not that that lineup's not good outside of it and they have the same war like they have like almost identical seasons it's i don't know why we're going to give one the award and not the other it should be a shared award the the fear i think a little bit is if you start giving um you know co mvp is this going to become a trend of like, you know, the team that deserves MVPs, like, oh, there's two guys that are really good. Like, let's just, co- you know, call it co-MVPs, right? That I uh, think that's definitely a worry. Um, I mean, I, I'm personally not worried about it. Also, Brooks Robinson is the that's guy who won 16 I, straight. Yeah. Uh, but 
I don't know. I mean, I like the thing to me is Goldschmidt is easy NL MVP, right? I don't think there's any there's any denying that. Yeah. And I, I get the point of let's say somehow Goldschmidt's stats and impact was distributed to all the other Cardinals. Okay. Is Arenado the MVP? Probably, right? Yeah. No, he definitely is. So so that is a good point of um at that point, it's either him or like Machado or one of the Dodgers. I think it's tough to say Machado, honestly. But like, I, I'm never gonna want to give Machado an award, so I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just the co MVP thing. I think is is really, is really tough especially when it's like two guys of the same team. Cause then you're saying they have equal impact. Right. And I think Goldschmidt, uh, yeah. I think, I think, uh, I think it's tough to say they have, they both have equal impact. I think that's one tough. Of, one of them's is, a better batter and one of them's a better Yeah. Fielder. But does batting matter more than fielding? Uh, depends on the position. I think I would, like, okay. I would say it does. I would say never. I would say batting matters more than fielding. For sure. sure. Right? Um, I mean, that's the Philly approach. They just signed a bunch of batters. Because, you know, the Red Sox last year made the ALCS, and they were the worst fielding team. Right? Sure, but they yeah. had a bunch of hitters that were just that just got hot. Obviously, you know, that expired at a certain point. But I think I think I think it's shown, and I agree that hitting is more valuable than fielding. So I think Goldschmidt's impact is definitely more than Arenado. Because I mean, Goldschmidt might win triple crown, right? Like that's absurd. That'd be nice. And I mean, Arenado's stats, yes, they're great. I'm not I'm not denying that he's hitting 300 and you know, I think 90 RBIs or something like that. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I don't I don't hate that take. I don't. But I think if it was co MVP, I would not agree with it. That's fair. Can't so gotta respect it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I think I think that's it. We said some hot takes. We had some good discussion. Uh, if I had to give an award for the best take, it's got to be you get penalized if you don't celebrate after a big play. <laughs> I think that has to be it. In fact, it probably should be implemented. I agree with it strongly. <laughs> um just a quick question if you break someone's ankles do you have to celebrate that so the rule should be if you break someone's ankles the game just stops and you're just allowed to mock them like a like how in hockey you have the penalty box you just have uh-huh. like a mocking box so you just like the game stops the clock stops you pick up the ball everyone points and laughs for five seconds and then you take two free throws and then you just play the game or should it be if you make the shot, like you break the ankles, you have to shoot it. That I mean, I that should definitely no. be a rule. If you yeah, break yeah, their yeah. ankles, you have you to have shoot to the shoot. ball. Yeah, even if someone comes over and helps. And then if you make it, then it's like the mocking box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, okay. I think I think that's, <laughs> you know, because like once you break the ankles, the play's still going. You can't you can't stop and celebrate. Although well, you, I know you, you can told, under the new you rule. told me this. What? You said if I ever made someone actually fall, I would stop playing. I would travel, willingly travel, and just laugh at them while they're on the floor. <laughs> you told me you would do this. Yeah, I've never made someone really fall like that. I've made people stumble, but never like yeah. a hard fall. No, like falling is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, my easily my favorite take. Great great content by you very proud of you for that one um but i think uh i think that's it wrap it up all right um all right if you guys like this let us know because this is definitely fun it's quick content you know it's like gonna be like 20 30 minutes quick listen fun stuff everyone loves hot takes and you know i might have to think of some but will I think 90% of his sports brain is hot takes because that's, that's just what he enjoys talking about. 
so we got we got plenty um will any closing thoughts no nah, no nah, i got them all out got them all out all right cool um thank you for listening and tune in next time